Hello everyone, how are y'all doing out there? Good, I hope. Welcome back to the In Her Power channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you books that I am currently reading, have already read, um, you know, those are the only two options, books that I am reading or have read for my spiritual, mental, energy, all the wellness, all wellness. Um, these books have really helped me to be able to identify things within myself that maybe I didn't have language for. Uh, these books were also help me, helping me to expand my ideas, my thoughts, um, and really challenge me in some ways to kind of step outside of myself and really see things from like a bigger perspective. And so I want to share these books with all of you. So let's get started. These books are in no particular order. The first book that I'm going to share with you is You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's been a while since I've read this book. I want to say that I read it about three years ago, I want to say. And it's a really good book. It's a very lighthearted, easy read. And it's very, very positive. And it gives you some like guidelines to really just kind of step out of any negative thinking that you may have. Um, if you're kind of like a negative internal dialogue speaker like I am, you need some uh, books or something to kind of help you get, break out of that cycle of that kind of negative self-talk. And this was just a fun read. It didn't take me long to go through the whole book. Uh, I also like to highlight, so I went through the book and I highlighted some things. And it's just, like I said, it's very simple and it gives you really good practices, examples of things that you can do that are just helpful along your journey. And so if you haven't started reading any books to kind of help with your overall mental health, well-being, I would say that this is a good book to start with. And it's pretty easy to find. You can get this at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, all of that good stuff. But if you can get it at your like local bookstore, do that first. Always buy local. The next book on my list is Pleasure Activism by Adrian Marie Brown. This book was challenging for me because I have um, a lot of issues around intimacy and I kind of always knew that I didn't really know that until I read this book. Um, just some of the inquiries, some of the thoughts, some of the ideas, the sharing, the suggestions, it had me thinking about intimacy in a completely different way, in a much more expansive way than just with a romantic partner. Um, really also thinking about intimacy related to my friendships, related to my family and to my children. And so this was a really helpful book to kind of break down some of those really hard ideas or rigid ideas I had about intimacy and relationships. And like I said, it was very, very challenging, but it was also a really pleasurable, enjoyable book to read. And so this was another easy read. I, I went through this pretty quickly, but I took some time to kind of let the information settle and digest a bit. So if you're someone that kind of struggles with intimacy, then I would recommend reading this book. It was a really nice read. This next book I have read probably four times, I want to say. I don't have the cover for it, <laughs> but it's Conversations with God with Neil Donald Walsh. My mom gave me this book uh, many years ago, and when I first read it, um, it wasn't that it was very shocking or anything that was kind of far and exceedingly out there for me to understand and comprehend because my mom had already read it and this is kind of like the spirituality that I was raised on. But it did challenge some ideas that I had about my relationship with God, spirit, universe, and having a more um, personal, deeper connection rather than kind of thinking of spirit or God as this entity that is outside of me that I am not connected to. And what I liked about this book is that it is in like a dialogue conversation type flow. So it's the author writing and then 
kind of channeling the answers and information through from spirit in the book. And there is a series. So this is the first volume. And I think that there's two other volumes. I have not read those, but I constantly go back to this one when I need kind of a reminder of just how close I am with spirit, just how deeply connected I am with spirit and just a reminder or refresher every so often that, um, you know, I don't have to really try so hard and that the, the love and the care that I'm seeking from God, from spirit is always with me. And so conversations with God is one of my favorites. Like I said, I think I've read this about four times and I'll probably read it again. The next book on my list is a little different. Uh, it's the Meru Netter, or as some people refer to it, Meru Inter. And this is more of Egyptian um, spirituality. Uh, while this does have an author, um, I think that I don't know if all of because there's different types of Meru Netter books. And so I don't know if it's the same person that is doing all of the books. Um, this is the volume one. There is a volume two. I don't have that one. Uh, but this one is a pretty meaty book. And as you see, I'm not all the way through with it because it has some pretty weighty, dense spiritual information in here. It's really good. Uh, and it also has practices that you can do. Uh, that's kind of the part where I'm at right now, which I've stopped because I'm taking the time to actually go through the practices slowly. So they, they do have information about meditations that you can do. But it's a really, really interesting read. And it also shows you how like other spiritual traditions kind of tie in with Egyptian spirituality or how Egyptian spirituality was the basis for other religions like Kabbalah because um, there's reference of the tree of life in here and there's also talk about like sacred geometry and all that kind of good stuff so if you're into Egyptian spirituality and like ancient ancient spiritual history I would say that you can pick this up this is a hard book to find. I got this at a local bookstore, a black owned bookstore that just so happened to carry rare books. Uh, so I was really happy to find it, but I'm sure you can order it online, but it's a good read. Another book to recommend is Spiritual Growth by Sanaya Roman. This was a part of the collection of books that I was reading in the very beginning of my spiritual journey or really kind of taking my spiritual journey on for myself. So right, right around the time that I was reading Conversations with God is a couple of years after that, I want to say is when I started reading this because it's been a while since I've read this one. But I love this book because it also gives foundational information, energetic information, like understanding about like your emotions and understanding about kind of seeing the, the bigger picture, connecting yourself with spirit and the universe and kind of like really tying in self as a patchwork or as a network, as a part of like all of this universal energy that's connected to everything. And if I do recall, yes, at the end of each chapter, there are practices that you can do. There are different meditations that you can do. And I always like a book that has practices in it because sometimes having additional information or practices that you can do helps to really kind of seep the information a little bit better and give it more texture than just kind of reading it. And so this was a very good book to read. This I think is also difficult to find. Um, but of course you can probably order it online, but uh, this was one of the other ones in the beginning that I read that was very, very helpful in helping me to kind of understand consciousness and different dimensions and time and space and all that stuff and how I am a part of all that, not just talking out about, about all of those concepts in a very heady or in kind of other place, talking about it in the perspective of me, how I'm connected to all of that. And I just thought that it was a very, very helpful read. Actually, I think I might read this again. I'm going to reread this. I'm going to pick this one up. Thank you for that reminder, Kendall. This next book is a rare book that I don't remember how I got a hold of it, but when I did, talk about mind-blowing books. 
You are a spiritual being having a human experience by Bob Frissel. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He also has another book um, that I think was before this one. Um, and I have that book too. And I read that one. That's also a good one. But this one was, um, there was something about this book where I just kind of was drawn to the information a bit more. The other book that he also has kind of piggybacks. I mean, it's a lot of the same information that he kind of takes from one and puts in the other. And so if you have either one, um, it's quite all right. Oh, the other book is called Nothing in This Book is True, but it's exactly how things are. Uh, interesting title, but that was also like a mind-blowing experience to read. And so this one talks about like Akashic Records, Sacred Geometry, your Merkaba, what your Merkaba is, how you can activate your Merkaba. We'll talk about that in another video. And so um, if you want to understand like kind of subtle energy in your, like for yourself and your body, not just kind of out in expansiveness, similar to like the spiritual growth book, but talking about like energy body as it pertains to you. Um, oof, this one is just, I can't say enough good stuff about this book. I really, really like it. And I've read this one a couple of times as well. And I, I've recommended this book to a lot of people. So it can be kind of out there, kind of spacey, but that's how I am. I like sci-fi, I like fantasy. I like kind of out of this world stuff. And even though it's not a fiction book, like, it just kind of takes all that sci-fi fantasy information. It's like, oh, like this is real. This is, this is real. So one of my favorite books, one of my top, top favorite books for spiritual, mental health, well-being, all that good stuff. Next up is a book that, I, you know, sometimes I don't know how I find these books. I don't, I really don't know. I can't even tell you. Um, <laughs> so I just came across this at a small bookstore and it was just the binder. This is the back that I saw and I was like, huh? And I was like, is, what is the name of this? And then I found out that it's called the Kabylon. And this little book, not very big, has pretty, pretty interesting information in it. And basically what it's explaining is the laws of the universe. It's explaining the laws of polarity, vibration, rhythm, um, gender, cause and effect, all of these laws that are intrinsic to the universe. And so if you understand the laws of the universe, then you're able to use that to your benefit. And so when I read this, I think I started reading this sometime last year in 2020. Yes, I started reading this towards the end of 2019, but like mostly in 2020. And I went through this very slowly too, because it's a lot of information to digest and it's a really small book. It's very easy to read, uh, but the information is very dense. It's very weighty. So I took my time with it and I didn't rush. There aren't any practices in this, which honestly, I think that's kind of a good thing because if there were, I think that it, I would have been floating out in space somewhere uh, and I wouldn't have been able to get back. But this was a really pleasant, surprising read um, because I wasn't looking for another spiritual book, but just happened to like this literally plopped into my lap. And so I was like, I'm going to read it. And I'm glad I read it. It was really good. So the Kabylon, it's another good choice. As I picked up the other book, I realized some of these are pretty heavy. The, the material is pretty intense. And so I'm giving you pretty heavy, dense reading material. Um, I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> if not, I'm doing it anyway. So the next book is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. I have read this one a couple of times as well. Um, I'm not sure when this came out, uh, but this is a popular book. So you may have seen it um, in your bookstore. You may have heard people talk about it, uh, but it is one of the like, consider one of like the top spiritual books to read. And I can completely understand why. And this book was helpful to me because it helped in breaking down 
the internal dialogue. I'm a person that has a lot of internal dialogue, as I'm sure you do as well. And sometimes my dialogue can be negative, not so kind and compassionate to myself. And I didn't know that. Honestly, I didn't really realize the thoughts that I was thinking, kind of the ruminating ideas that were tumbling around in my mind. And so with this book, I was able to hone in on that dialogue and start to really course correct and change it. And it's also, it's a, I would say it's, I won't say it's an easy or heavy read. I think it depends on kind of where you are in your life with this particular book because there are times that I've read it where it came across very heavy and then other times that I read it where it was just, I was able to take in the information a lot easier. So maybe it's heavy, maybe it's light. I don't know really how to describe that uh, for you, but if you find it in your bookstore, kind of skim through it for a little bit and see if it's something that appeals to you. I think that it's a really, really good story. Um, I think it's a really good book. It challenged me. Um, this was some of the material that when I was reading that I didn't feel kind of that I was in the right space to read it at the time, but I'm glad that I did because it helped kind of break me out of some of the rigid boxes that I had placed myself in. So definitely recommend Untethered Soul. It's a really good read. Really good. I got two more books. You good? You hanging in there? Okay, just two more, just two more. All right, so the next one is a more recent book and it's called Love and Rage by Lama Rod Owens. Lama Rod um, has contributed to a book called Radical Dharma uh, that was written also by Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams. It's another good book. Didn't put it on the list, but it's another good book to read. Um, and what I love about Love and Rage is that I would say that for myself, I was very disconnected from the emotion of anger. I did not like to express anger. I did not like to feel anger. And I also just kind of would try as best as I could not to be angry, which is hard. Um, and so I thought that anger was an emotion that I really, th that was uncontrollable, that really had no purpose. And so I avoided my anger a lot. And this was very helpful in getting me to be in relationship with my anger in a different way, where I didn't see that it was something that was explosive, or I didn't see that it was something that was destructive. I saw that it was something that was actually helpful and uh, transformative. And if I was working in conjunction with my anger, and really being compassionate with myself through the process that I could use that energy. I could use the, the anger as fuel for anything in my life that I wanted to kind of propel forward. And this is a really, really fun read. I really like how Lama writes and it's just, it, it, it pulled me in. I didn't feel that it was um, too challenging. I think I read this whole thing in less than a week. And at the end of each chapter, there are different practices and exercises that you can do. So once I went through the whole book, then I went back and I would go through the practices one by one. And those were actually really helpful too. Some of the practices really helped me to tap into some emotion and some feelings and some kind of narratives that I had about anger that um, I was very dismissive about for a long time. And so I really, really appreciated this book to be able to help me to have a different relationship with my anger and to really embrace it and not kind of say that it was just kind of an insignificant emotion. So if you're someone that struggles with anger and really wanting to have a better balance with it, Love and Rage is a great, is a great book to, to read. So another recommend. And last but not least, this is a new book that just came out. My bookmark is still in there. And it's What Happened to You. And this is a collaborative effort uh, with Dr. Bruce Perry and Oprah Winfrey. When I first saw this, I was not intending to actually buy this book. I wanted to get another book. And I saw it and I thought, hmm, should I? I don't know. I'm reading a lot of books right now. Do I want to add this to the, 
to the group of books that I'm reading and I'm glad that I picked it up because this book has been very transformative for me, more so in my mental health and wellness than in spiritual wellness. Um, understanding childhood trauma, because that's mostly what this book talks about is childhood trauma. And so if you've experienced trauma in your childhood and you're really trying to get to a place of being healthier and understanding how some of the experiences that you had in your childhood affect you now. And if, even if you don't have that understanding, because when I started reading this book, I'm able to now kind of join how I feel in the present and link it back to, oh, this is the root. This is where this came from. This is why I feel like this, or this is why I react this way to this thing, because I'm able to make the connection to my childhood. But even if you're not able to do that, this book can help you do that and understand kind of where some of the emotions, where some of the, the energy, the anxiety, the fear, the depression, all that stuff, where it comes from. Interestingly enough, this is also kind of a conversational book, similar to Conversations with God with Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, so it's Oprah and Dr. Perry kind of talking back and forth. And it's it's a conversational book, which I kind of I kind of like that because given the topic, given the weightiness, given the information, if it came across very clinical uh, I think for me, it would just be a little bit harder to digest. There's another book that I read. I didn't have it as a part of my group or my list here uh, called The Body Keeps the Score. Um, and that one was a really good book for me when I started reading it, uh, I want to say about four, maybe four or five years ago, some somewhere around there. And I really liked that book. I did not finish it because it was so intense and it was very clinical in the way that the author was writing it. And while I understand and appreciate that, given that um, he's, uh, I think he's a psychologist, um, I can understand wanting to have like clinical terminology for things. And there's clinical terminology in this book, but the way that it comes across is just a little, it's a little easier to digest than say some other books that I've read that talk about childhood trauma. So I can't say enough good things about this one. I'm, I'm, I'm blazing through it, but I'm also taking my time because I want to make sure that I really take the information in and just absorb it as opposed to just reading through it quickly and then just disposing of it. So what happened to you? What happened to you? I love it. I love it. So that about wraps up this video and the list of books that I have had that I wanted to share with you. Um, there are some other books that I kind of mentioned, like I said in the video that I've read, but I just wanted to give these books because these were like foundational for me and really helped me to see things in a much more expansive way than just kind of my little frame of mind and also expanding my well-being and my mental health. So try these books out. See if you like them, see if you gravitate towards them. Um, I don't have a Q&A for this video because one of the cues that I get asked quite a bit is what book should I read? What books are helpful to start me on my spiritual journey? And so this kind of whole video is really the Q&A of just overall information. Um, and if you have some other books that you've read or are currently reading that you feel are really helpful, that are really transformative, that are just expanding your worldview, blowing your mind, please share those books with me. You can put them in the comments below. Uh, you can send me an email. Uh, let me know what you're reading. And if you have read some of these books and you like them, please also share that information with me in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you as always. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the Inner Power channel. If you are not a patron, please consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page. It's a lot of P's, Patreon page. Uh, I'm in here, which is the title of the podcast that I host. Um, with the Patreon page, there's a lot of content on there that is not for everybody. So you get other content that you can't get anywhere else. Plus, we are creating a spiritual community. We're creating a community of mental 
health, mental wellness, and just wanting each other to be seen and supported and loved and cared for. So head on over to the Patreon page. The link is in the description box. That's where you can find it and pick a tier. That's what you're based off of the content that you want to have access to and then sign up and you'll get some more juicy content. Okay. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next video where we'll be talking about the sacral chakra. Ooh, yeah, some good stuff. All right. See you in the next video. Love you so much.